is dead. I do have a surprise segment that I didn't tell you about. A surprise segment? You're so surprised. About the, new, the, the meta glasses kind of came out. Oh yeah, this week. This week on thanks, I hate it. Yeah, so we're back. We're back with the whole, um, you know, tech dystopia. Um, we saw the Apple Vision Pro earlier this year. Um, we actually did a segment on that as well. You can kind of see um, the the original model. This is why I'm trying. This is why I'm. This is what I was saying. Like, so the Vision Pro that wasn't that wasn't meant to be the end all be all. That that was merely a prototype, guys. Do you see how fast this shit gets? This, this gets remodeled and it gets better. Yeah. Not only is it cheaper, but it does a lot more. It does a lot more. Is different from every other screen that you play. Is different from every other screen that you have ever used. And that is because it is not actually a screen. Um, it is a completely new kind of display architecture with these tiny projectors and the arms of the glasses that shoot light into waveguides that have you know, nanoscale 3D structures etched into the lenses so they can diffract light and put holograms at different uh, depths and sizes into the world in front of you. And all of that is directed by custom silicon and sensors that we designed and powered by a battery that fits in the arm of the glasses. It is a absolutely incredible amount of technology to be able to miniaturize and fit into a pair of glasses and a small puck that goes with it to help power the whole thing. All right, so how are you going to interact with the glasses? Well, there's a few ways that this is gonna work. They're gonna do voice and AI. They're going to do hand tracking and eye tracking, so you can select UI elements by looking at them. But there's one more way that you're going to be able to interact with them that is really pretty neat. A neural interface. See, voice is great, but, but the thing is sometimes you're in public and you don't want to say what you're trying to do with your computer out loud. Hand tracking is neat for controlling different interfaces, but you don't want to like walk down the street like this, right? So I think that you need a device that allows you to you know, just send a signal from your brain to the device. So this isn't just the first full screen, like, uh, you know, full wide field of view holographic AR glasses. This is also the first device that is powered by our wrist-based neural interface. So when people have gotten to try out these glasses, we've shown them to a, a handful of people at this point, it's like, it's like an emotional experience. Looking. I mean, like people are kind of giddy, they don't want to take them off. A lot of people have said that this is the craziest technology they've ever seen. Um, you know, it was enough that I wanted to add to this key. Look at all the soy faces. Some of the fun reactions that, that, that people have, have had since it's pretty wild. So you want to cut to that for a second? My God. Ah. Wow. Whoa. Well, that is insane. The weight of this is just such a game changer. It's comfortable. Yep, a hundred grams is a real deal. deal. This is a big deal. Wow, it's super sleek already. This side and your cable. Yeah. I mean, that's freedom. Really? No? Yeah. Kodak. The real neat feature of these glasses is that they actually yes. fucking detonate if you say anything bad about Israel. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Me your face. This is pretty crazy that I can do four things at once. I am never, never the fucking grabbing one of these. The color contrast that is, is never going anywhere near my face. Excellent. I see it oh. super clear. <laughs> it's crazy as fuck. Another technology that would be incredible if we didn't live under capitalism. We're talking no wires. It's cheaper. It's smaller. Totally new lenses. A 
And um, <clears throat> this shit's kind of bad, guys. Yeah, nobody um, wants to watch hentai that bad. Like, come on. Yeah, no one wants to do that. And this plus with Neuralink, so you can kind of see, like, this is why I want to stay on top of this, because we are entering the second manifest destiny. From the have-nots to the yeah. have-bots. Hey. Here's some more footage. Generation of Ray-Ban meta Smart glasses. Be gone, lizard. These are the first smart glasses. Be gone, lizard. Built and shipping with Meta AI in them. Starting in the U.S., you're going to get this state-of-the-art AI that you can interact with hands-free wherever you go. He has the issue with free software update to the glasses that makes them multimodal. Why are so all the worst are people able to understand yeah. what you're looking at? Why does why do all the worst questions? people so have no clue? I don't is, get it. Standing in front of uh, do they breastfeed in their spare time? Let me get it. That's in front of you to know what it's saying. Oh, he has a um, or if you need help fixing this sad leaky faucet, um, you can basically just you talk to Meta AI and look at it, and it'll walk you through it step by step how to do it. Um, we we built in one more this feature is creepy smart glasses. On so you many are going apps. to be able to live stream to your friends and followers from your glasses. Everybody is ready to race, and I am getting ready too. Let's go. Switching to glasses. Being able to share you know, what you're doing live with your friends and POV. Your POV experience is live now. Oh man, this is just this is just an advanced gooning device. The kind of thing that you can only do on on smart glasses. So, all right, these Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses, we're launching them on October seventeenth, uh, starting at two ninety nine, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all think of them. I actually, look, I'm just. I hate everything about this. Thing. I hate everything about this. Yeah, I'm just checking. Give me a sec. I'm just checking to see if it's the same thing. Uh, I got to try Meta's true augmented reality glasses called Orion, and it was one of the wildest things I've ever experienced. So what is augmented reality or AR? Well, instead of putting on a VR headset and looking at a screen, AR lets you see the real world through clear lenses, but with digital content projected directly onto your surroundings through something called a waveguide. Imagine doing anything you'd normally do with your phone or your computer, like watching videos, sending messages, or playing games, but in 3D right in your own space. And if you think that sounds crazy, trust me, it felt like that. And Orion is not just the glasses, it's actually made out of three parts. Of course the glasses, but then a wireless puck for offloading some of the processing power, and this crazy thing called the neural wristband that picks up signals from your brain to your hand so that you can interact with the glasses. I got a full hour with a meta team and tried it all out, and while it's still a bit clunky as a prototype, Orion already functions like a complete... From your brain to your hand. Did you hear that? Yeah, sure did. We're offloading some of the processing power. Oh boy, and this crazy fun. thing called the neural wristband that picks up signals from your brain to your hand so that you can interact with the glasses. I got a full hour with a meta team and tried it all out. And while it's still a bit clunky as a prototype, Orion already functions like a complete next gen device. I got a play 3D games that were like Space Invaders and Pong, and even used AI to label groceries and create a smoothie recipe on the spot. And Meta spent years developing this. And That's crazy, dude. And while it's not quite ready for consumers, Orion shows where AR is headed. And this tech isn't just a concept anymore. Orion proves that AR is real, and it's probably going to change the way that we interact with the world. And if you want to check out what tech is available right now, I have the best VR headsets, accessories, and games linked to my bio. I got to try. It gets worse. It gets even worse. Yeah, it does. I'm trying to find that post I made. Terrifying new app shows how Meta smart glasses can help you identify a stranger on the street, find their home address, and yeah. all their information with the secret camera. A secret camera that can identify people on the street. 
We build classes yeah. that let you identify anybody on the street. And they want everybody they to wear these. Flex <laughs> from just a photo of your face is stabbing. To use it, you just put the glasses on, then as you walk by people, the glasses will detect when somebody's face is in frame. This photo is used to analyze them, and after a few seconds, their personal information pops oh, up. Oh, man. June Lee, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, this is so Gestapo. You're from Bergen <laughs> County Academies? Yeah. Your, your Korean name is Ju Yoon? <laughs> uh, Cambridge Community Foundation. No, we have to go oh, back. Hi, no? Wait, are, are you a uh, Betsy? Yes. Oh, you, okay. You I, think I, uh, I think I met you through like the Cambridge Community Foundation, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's great to meet you. I'm Kane. We saw the similar thing with the last, um, the last tech that we covered. Yeah, Minority Report really was a documentary. Yeah, we're 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 entering some really weird stage with, um, you know the you know how we showed with the iPhone 16 AI we have one on our channel actually. Um, I'll post a link in a second. But um, you know we saw that commercial where it showed um. Yeah, I did. I saw that commercial Sorry. road show. <laughs> I love no, it's these. actually it's actually right here. Oh, oh, I didn't think you'd remember me. Yeah, of course. To go at Cafe Grinnell. You met Zach Wingate at Cafe Grinnell. Hey, Zach. Yeah. Oh, wow, I didn't think you'd remember me. Yeah, of course. As soon as I saw you, I'm like, it's Zach. Nobody walks like Zach. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that now we're we're entering a stage where we can just like identify people on the street. This is kind of a, this is a very strange like tech phenomenon that's happening now. Are you a uh, Betsy? Yes. Oh, okay. I think I uh, I think I met you through like the Cambridge Community Foundation, right? Who is not immediately creeped out? Who doesn't run away dude, from what's the shit? fuck? Like everyone, dude. How do you how do you walk up to someone and be like, oh, I know you? Uh, yeah. Uh, like imagine someone you've never met before just walks up to be just walks up to you and just says, "Oh, aren't you? You're you're um you're Betsy, whatever. You work at uh, Cambridge University and you live at this address. And uh, this is how much how much your salary is. And this is all of your information online. This is your Instagram account. Dude, how are you not saying? Is all I'm going to say is, can you imagine MAGA with this sort of technology? Can you imagine? Hey there, the hey there. Your, name, your name's Jeff, right? You said something negative about Trump on Thursday night and you live at this address. Oh, my God. We already have a problem with creeps in public and strangers who are like, you know, God forbid you're a woman and you get stalked with this shit. This is not good, guys. This is really not good. Yeah, it's fucked. This is not good. And also, here's the thing. The way a lot of these play out is uh, they try and test it on the public first. And the general goal is to get the public on board because that manufactures consent for the state to use it, for... Yeah, law enforcement to use it, for, for federal agents to use it, and yes, for the fucking military to use it. Because once the public's using it, it's like, oh yeah, we're all just using this now. We're all just doing it. You're doing it so you don't have to remember shit about people, and you can come off as not a sociopath who only cares about themselves. And they're using it to identify uh, dissenting voices posting on the internet about uh, various wrong think. Or identifying targets on the battlefield, which they're already fucking doing with Palantir anyway. Yeah, I think I met you through like the Cambridge Community Foundation, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's great to meet you. I'm Kane. Oh wait. Oh, so you, do you happen to be the person working on like like minority stuff for like Muslims in India at all or something? Yes. Really? Yes. Are you Kashif? Yes. Oh, I've read your work before. That's super hey, cool. <laughs> I'm Anfu. Nice to meet you. Oh, I love Anfu. Get Anfu. Oh, okay. But uh, are you uh, Sarah Chan? 
No. So here's how it works. We stream the video from the glasses straight to Instagram and have a computer program monitor the stream. We use AI to detect when we're looking at someone's face. Then we scour the this internet. This is why you never put your real name out there, person. folks. Finally, we use data. Dude, it's too late. It's like what Julian Assange said. Like once, once you register for like a passport or like you get a social security number, that's it. You're in the Fed's system already. You're in the system already. Yeah. And by this the way, like, by oh. the way, guys, don't for, don't forget where this comes from. This shit's coming from Meta. Okay. Meta. So, Meta. What? This is why I always say, do not post anything on Facebook. Do not post anything on Instagram that you don't want to be held accountable for. Post goofy memes on Facebook. Post selfies on Facebook. Do not fucking post anything that has any kind of threat to power or anything that's even remotely charged. Okay? Don't do it. You're going to get in a fight with your boomer uh, your boomer uncle anyway. He's going to fight with you and, you know, tell you that liberals are communist. It, it's going to suck anyway. But just remember, this technology is by the same power center that is – that has access to everything you're sharing on their social media networks. They already have it. How many people are not on Facebook? I don't know anybody. I don't post shit on Facebook. I, I haven't post- used Facebook, but like you're on Facebook. You're already in the file, guys. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I'm on several lists. That's also true. People giving up their DNA. I've never done that shit. I already know my heritage, so I don't really care. I have this really I, cool I, thing. I have this really cool thing to figure out my heritage. It's called a mirror. Um, yeah, we could just do that, or you could just ask it. your parents or your grandparents. I mean, does it really be, like matter? Like who, you, like your great 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 ancestor was? Like at some point, like would you like? Is it immoral to go back in time and to fuck your like great 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 ancestor? Like, what? like how the, I'm saying, I'm saying that that is so blood like separated at that point. That's like a 16th cousin. Does that make any sense? Um, yeah. And I feel like, I feel like the 20, Does that not make stuff, any sense? okay. I, no, no. I, I feel like the 23 and me stuff has like kind of a, it's always felt like a bit of like a racial like a racial superiority tinge to me in a way, because it's like, I've known a lot of people who use that sort of shit and then they use it to like post how pure they are, just how white they are. Um, I'm actually but, banned on Facebook right now. Sorry. I want to, I honestly, I only use it to keep in touch with like friends and relatives. I don't think you should use it past like an immediate, like real life, family friend sort of talking to hub and even then i think you should look for alternatives um you know for the time being twitter is essentially the last wild wild west for now but even that is heavily censorious and has problems um but yeah, uh, as far as uh, Facebook's I, concerned, just don't, just do not. This is really do, you, uh, Sarah Chan? No. So here's how it works. We stream the video from the glasses straight to Instagram okay. and have a computer program monitor the stream. We use AI to detect when we're looking at someone's face. Then we scour the internet to find more pictures of that person. Those Finally, we use data sources like online articles we and don't. auto registration databases to figure don't. out their name, phone number, home address, and relatives' names. And it's all fed back to an app we wrote on our phone. Using our glasses, we were able to identify dozens of people, including Harvard students, without them ever even knowing. Here's some of our favorites. Uh, but on, was um, Secretary of Transportation, Secretary of Transportation, that was like when she was getting... Wait, oh, wait, what's her answer? LA Chow. Yeah, okay. Is your address for... Valley? Yeah. <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia, 303. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah, let's oh just get people's God. address. Dude, it's what, fine. What <laughs> just walk up to someone. Hey, is your address? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Okay, that's Imagine, not socially acceptable. That is not yeah. socially acceptable. You cannot yeah. walk up to someone and be like, "Hey, do you live here?" That's not something you do. 
imagine a dude just like walking up to a girl and being able to identify where she lives. That's there's some crazy. shit. There's okay. some shit address? that you just should or be able to do. What oh, the fuck? Hey, what's your name? Yeah. Okay. Is your address for <laughs> Valley? Yeah. <laughs> no. That girl's no. going home with nightmares. She's never going to feel safe again. That girl is never going outside again. Guys, the whole Big Brother's watching shit has literally turned into Big Brother is watching. As in they are watching. They're going to be watching through your fucking eyes. They're quite literally just scanning you. This is like Matrix shit. This is crazy. <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Your th no mas. Is uh, oh my god. <laughs> yes. Moving on. Also attended Yale's Young Summer Program, right? Really? Yeah, oh. these, are, these are me in like middle school. Oh my god. What about John and Susan? Are they your... Uh, Those are my parents. Parents? Okay, cool. <laughs> Is that you? Oh, oh, I told you, they're so good. <laughs> Is that you? Oh, you're so oh I'm so oh scared. God. I'm so fucking scared, y'all. So we ha now we we have Mac we have Mark Zuckerberg saying that this is basically going to he predicts by 2030 this will replace iPhones or phones in whatever sense. We saw how many people bought into the uh, the uh, <clears throat> Apple Vision Pro. God well, forbid, what we see here. Well, think about this too. Think about this too. They've been very clever on how they've built a reliance on our phones, right? Because think about it. Think about how often you need to use your phone for two-factor authentication or, you know, you, you try to log in somewhere. A verification has been sent to your phone. It's for your security. Think of how reliant we are on our phones now. And then eventually they're going to start phasing those out and transitioning everybody to this shit. All of a sudden, you're probably going to be reliant on this shit for the same kind of two-factor authentication or what have you. But now, it's on a device that can identify people, figure out where they are in meat space. Uh, like, th th this is turning into a level of surveillance that we've never seen in our society before. And... It's already bad with phones. They've already got ample information just from your phones. Now think about it with a device with this capabilities, this capacity to just document essentially everything about you. This is fucking terrifying. This needs to be rejected. The general population needs to just not not use this. I don't care how convenient it is. I don't care how cool it is. I don't care how much they say that you need this in order to live. We as a society need to just hard pass on this. Back to the dystopian drawing board. Whatever's needed. Because we cannot let shit like this just get sleepwalked into normalcy. We will never have privacy again. Not even in our own home. Never, never again. That's the number one freedom. I forgot who said that, but like that's the only freedom you have left is your privacy. Yeah. And they want to take that away from you now. No, they want it. Glasses are going to be the next major computing platform, mm -hmm. but each new platform doesn't tend to just replace the old one. Right, so yeah. I guess the, the version of this that I think about is like, you probably have this experience often where you're sitting at your desk mm -hmm. and you have your computer there, Yet you still pull out your phone to do things. That's true. Right? Yes. Okay. So at some point in the last ten years, mobile. Oh, by the by the way, this is this is this is a real thing. I wanted to bring this up. This is eight months ago. <sighs> Raped in the metaverse. This is real, guys. This is real. This is real. Yeah, this is... This is real life now. This is real life now. 
really became the primary computing platform. Mm -hmm. We didn't get rid of our computers. No. It's just that even when you have it, you still do more things on your phone. So what I think is gonna happen with glasses is we're gonna get to this point, probably sometime in the 2030s, mm -hmm. where you have your phone with you, it's but it's gonna stay in your pocket more because you're just gonna be doing more and more things on your glasses that maybe today you would do on your phone. You'll reach a point where, you know, just like with your computer, there are probably some things that could be done in a richer way or, mm -hmm. or better in some way on your phone, but you're just gonna, the glasses will be your main computing platform and that will be kind of your default go-to thing. And then, and then maybe over time you get to this point where people just don't bring their phone with them everywhere. But, but yeah. I think that's really far down the line. This is where we're at. <clears throat> that is the future they want. All of those dystopian novels, that's nothing more than predictive programming. Um, no, no, yeah, I, I think so, because Brave New World was, um, like, I was just Huxley, like, he was MI6. Mm-hmm. 